What's up, everybody? This is Leo Ray's Rayon. And I'm Josh Glaze Glazer. And today, today we have America's team, America. Uh, <laughs> the star. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Five Super Bowl rings from 25 years ago. I think it's think almost 35 now. 35. <laughs> Troy Aikman, I mean, shit, what? No, I'm not even going to go there. Uh, yeah, it's just been a long time, man. It's been a long time. Uh, man, you, you, know what, you know what? You know what? You know what? I wasn't going to do this, but you know what? They canceled the rodeo because of this coronavirus. I'm going there, man. America team. Team America. You feel better? All right, yeah, I had to do that. Okay, all right. All right, anyway, all right, y'all. So we're going into the Cowboys. The Cowboys are the most underachieving team in the past. I mean, they're the most underachieving team, like, in the past 15 years almost. Well, well at least. I don't know. They've only started having talent since they started drafting offensive linemen again. But that's a whole different. Yeah, yeah. They should so, be better than they are, but they, they choke man, the teams. Yeah, man. I mean, bro, 8-8, eight and eight, you know, how did they lose the division? Like, they lost – bro, they, they lost to the Eagles, and the Eagles had all their receivers hurt. It wasn't they lost. their receivers. Every damn player on their team was hurt. <laughs> that's, that's a sad – All right, let's I stop mean, talking shit about it. We're supposed to be bringing hope for them. What are they – I mean, I, I mean they're – we're relating to the Cowboys fans. Like every Cowboys fan I know that's a real fan would say the same thing. So not in I'm, public. They oh yeah, oh yes. Oh, I mean a real Cowboys fan, yeah, they're gonna tell the truth, man. But they what? still love their team. I mean, that's what makes them America's team. You know, there America. Must be a different kind of Cowboys fan in Texas than there is. People, in the people, world. people love them, bro. People love they're, them. Their rational confidence. Yeah. Well, I mean, but man, all right. So, you know. They lost lost the number one corner man. Lost Byron Jones, uh, you know, man. Uh, I mean, they they like I won't, I'm not gonna say they're a bad team. I we all know that the Cowboys are a good team. I'm not gonna say they they suck. They do not suck. They are a good team. Who's I their head coach now? That's uh, the big. It's the big change, right? It's uh, yeah, yeah. Mike McCarthy. Personally, I mean, it's probably better than Jason Garrett, but I mean, that's like saying, like, you know, I mean, shit. I'm not even gonna go down that road. Bang, banging your head against the wall is probably not as good as not doing it. So that's what they're I mean, doing. He's better. I would say head against the wall anymore. Yeah, yeah, but you know, now they're walking into the wall. Yeah, anyway. it's a different it's a different te- technique. Now they might I be mean, like getting a running start or uh, I mean, who uh, knows, bro? Where like metaphor is going. Maybe 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 I think he's better than McCarthy. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm my bad. I think he's better than Jason Garrett. Um, you know, they still have they have um they have a number one receiver and they have a, a running back and you know, I mean, Dak like Cowboys fans love Dak, you know. I think Dak is a good player, like, but you know, I mean, that the truth is about that division. Like, you don't need great necessarily, like great, you know, elite quarterback play to necessarily win that division. You know what I mean? Like, they have a good defense. You know. I don't know how you feel about Blake Bell. They did just sign Blake Bell. I mean, he's like a – I guess he's going to replace Witten. So now they still have – Blake Bell? Yeah, I know. I know. From Oklahoma, the guy that tried to play quarterback but couldn't <laughs> fucking throw a ball. I'm sorry. All right, I shouldn't use that word. But, yes. That, all right, come on. I mean, you know what I'm saying. This is, I'm, this is what the Cowboys are. They have pockets of talent. They don't really have any huge weaknesses. Yeah. But they also just don't have – they just have – they pick weird players that, besides Zeke, just aren't a lot of guys that scare you. And they just have this ability to pick the guys that are kind of good and good enough to be, like, 
exciting to fans for when they first get them, but as they longer and longer and they the fans have to commit to these players – that they start feeling bad about committing, but they know they have to because it's their team and they have to be irrationally confident about it. I mean, so with that being said, like, what do you see them needing? Like, like, what do you, I mean, so, so, so we both kind of agree that they, they can go a multitude of different ways in this draft, I would say because of the, the way their team is constructed, right? Like, they don't I, – I wouldn't say that they necessarily have some straight-up glaring needs. I mean, I'll say – Okay, well, what, what would you say? There's three – there's only three things I see that they really need in order mm-hmm. to, like, improve and to, like, maximize Dak or keep the defense at a relatively elite level – when they don't play good teams, yeah, that's yeah. their issue. Is they, they're really good when they play bad teams, and they play good teams, and they kind of can't keep it together unless right. both of their star linebackers in uh, Van Der Esch and Smith are, are healthy. Yeah, right, true. They true. the defense. But so two things that – the first thing is uh, they need to obviously address outside corner by losing Byron Jones. I right. Mean, yeah. They need a man-to-man corner that can tackle, similar to him. It's hard to find those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, that's number one. It's and you get look at a guy like C.J. Anderson at, at uh, seventeen. The the one caveat of why they wouldn't um, go corner in the first round would be if a uh, interior pass rusher, just a pass rusher in general, yeah, dropped true. to them. That's exactly that, what that I they have. loved. And who knows how they view guys like Caleb on Chase on? And some people really like him. Uh, I like him, but I don't think he's a number 17 pick. But the Cowboys have been weird. They drafted guys like Taco before, so um, who hasn't really panned out. Um, but other guys have. Uh, they need D-line interior pass rush because they lost uh, Malik Collins, who it was key to their scheme. They're going to be running a completely different thing now with Mike Nolan. They're going to be blitzing a lot more, playing a lot more man. It's not going to be a lot of just four rush and everyone else cover. So it's going to be much more pressure on the corner. So you're not going to get by with uh, guys that are Bad. pretty good, but you're, you're going to find out how good guys like Awuzie and Anthony Brown, who they just signed, right. and the young and uh, Jordan Lewis from Michigan, yeah. how well he can play outside of the slot. They're going to, so they kind of, it's weird. They have two slot guys. Mm-hmm. And Lewis and Anthony Brown, and they kind of have to decide: Do we plan on playing one of those guys outside in man-to-man? Which who knows? Maybe it works. Probably, I mean, it's unproven. Or do we draft another guy that can play out there and throw him out there first, like a CJ Anderson? I mean, CJ Henderson from Florida. He's tackling issues. That's just one thing. And then Jalen Johnson, we've talked about before from Utah. So we'll see how it goes. It's it's really best player available in terms of D line or corner. I mean, they could add another safety too if they wanted to diversify that. Um, yeah, that, that's what I had them picking. I, I had them kind of like I know there have been talk about. I've seen people say, um, you know, I feel like this is around the time that we could see like a player like Grant Delpit come off the board like around middle of the first round, if not they, earlier. Did they sign a safety. I don't, I don't know off top. I don't know off top. But I know that, you know, Heath is, like, almost 30 years old. and He's a free agent, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And then Xavier Woods' contract is coming up soon. So, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, just I would say probably the best defensive back on the board is probably going to be picked up here. I don't know. But, uh. Yeah, uh, the one other need that I've that I clearly see, and it goes to the offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, they kind of have two guys that they're really comfortable with, and Michael Gallup and a uh, right. great right. route runner, mm-hmm. and Amari Cooper is a little more of a field stretcher, but also good route runner. The issue with Cooper, and he struggles against really physical man-to-man coverage or any, pretty mm-hmm. much any kind of press coverage. Mm-hmm. He's, his numbers aren't great against that. So if you wanted to utilize him more fesh, more efficiently, you could move him to the slot and you could draft another wide outside guy. Yeah, true, or true. you just keep him outside and you have to draft a slot guy. But they need another guy um, yeah. 
and it would have to be more probably 51 or 82 because they have yeah. picked 17, 51, and 82. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I would target guys like Michael Pittman. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about before at a USC, very physical, kind of a guy they don't have right now, a bigger receiver. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, who's like super explosive, just just doesn't drop anything out of Arizona State. But uh, the po- the polish isn't necessarily la- there, so it would be more predicated on uh, McCar- McCarthy's ability to get him open and stuff. So I don't know if you want to put that pressure on him. And then there's guys like Claypool and Mims later too right. that maybe you can get. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, with how how far how fast Mims' stock is rising, I mean, who knows how far he'll actually drop into the second round? You know what I mean? So they have a lot of a lot of possibilities and a lot of um, ways that they can improve their team in this draft. And I mean, I think this is that's pretty much the the best. Like, bro, I think that it's really good that that they, that the Cowboys don't have, like, a glaring need on, like, their offensive line or, like, you know what I mean? So so where they can they can take, you know what I mean, a, a receiver, they can take a cornerback, they can take, you know, all these different things to and, and still get better, you know what I mean? Now, that being said, I mean, who knows? Like, I think, you know, Teron, I almost said Teron Armstead, uh, Teron Smith, is uh getting a little bit he's older you know he's about he's been 20. getting hurt a lot too yeah i mean nick uh zach zach martin is getting hurt too you know what i mean uh uh what's his name the the travis frederick just retired you know what i mean so although the cowboys o-line is like you know the strength of their team they and leo collins as well Oh yeah, Leo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Playing, uh, he's been really stepping up as a. Leader. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's been playing really well. So he's, so, he's more upper upper trajectory kind of guy. Yeah, right, right, right. So I mean, their line is solid. They can't. I can still see them if there's a lineman that that if there's a really good interior lineman that can step in and play, and they feel really confident about it. I can also see the Cowboys going O line, but I think they're in a good position because they don't necessarily have to do one particular thing you know yeah the you were you were talking about safety earlier and i i they haven't really added anybody um it seems i after one guy that's into it now that's possibly a pick there is a guy grant delpit who just ran a uh a four three nine he did a virtual pro day and that was the question about his speed Mm -hmm. uh he had an off year this year due to injuries and stuff but if the cowboys are smart He's a top five to ten talent that could fall oh, yeah. just because of how we played this year a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, he showed up. He showed up and showed out or later in the year when they got to the playoffs and everything for LSU. But right. he would be a great look there. Maybe Xavier McKinney in the second. I don't know if he's. Maybe they value him higher. He's a more of a Swiss Army knife kind of safety. Mm-hmm. So it was so is Delpit, but I mean Delpit's probably better in the deep deep half of the field. Uh, it'll be interesting what Mike Nolan's defense looks like now that he's had kind of separation from when he was the head coach over in San Francisco. He's been in New Orleans, mm-hmm. and he wasn't he was contributing to the game plan there, but he wasn't necessarily the 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 main guy. I believe he was working a lot on the third down uh, third down packages for the Saints. Yeah, if my uh, memory is correct, but. Um, It'll be really interesting to see where they go. They really – that's another four – it's a fourth thing that they – so they could really safety, slot receiver, really offensive weapon, mm-hmm. outside corner, and then interior lineman just because they needed to continue to replenish that rotation. They yeah. signed uh, uh, They signed uh, Gerald McCoy, which was a good oh, pickup, yeah, yeah, yeah. a veteran force. But, I mean, how much does he have left? How much do you want to rely on a guy with that age? Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they go. I have them going nine and seven, ten and six. Mm-hmm. I think there's just uh, another corner that they could look at is Jeff Gladney, because it's they just need to put all their resources into the pass defense. Right. They'll figure out the run defense. They have the linebackers for that. They have the DNs for that. They have enough talent to play the play the run, but. It needs to be the emphasis, and it's basically an all-pass because on the offense, they need to work on their pass game as well. So hopefully 
They're hoping Mike McCarthy will breathe some fresh air into their all pass game. Mm-hmm. Nine seven, ten and six. What do you say? Man, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say ten and six, eleven and five. I'm gonna say that this is the year that the Cowboys can, you know, actually play up to their potential and and uh, you know win because I feel like they kind of have to now. Uh, so yeah, I, I I think they'll win the division. I hope they do, and um, you know. I'm looking for a new team, so maybe you know they're right up the street. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll become. Uh, Don't maybe you I'll, do that. No. Maybe, maybe no. I'll join. We, we will, skip the basement. podcast will not exist if you turn into a damn Cowboys fan <laughs> after already jumping ship on the damn Lakers. You become a Laker Cowboys. Dude, that's fan. a joke. That's a joke, bro. I, okay. Bro, yeah, man. I'm. I'm. St- I don't know, man. That's a whole other podcast. You're in trans- so, we'll get into that later. Yeah, That's in transition. Then, yeah. People are people are just love. my teams have been letting me down for so long that I, I I I've been through too much, man. I've been through too much heartache, and I think it's it's time that I I deserve a winner, bro. I deserve. Not saying I'm gonna just bandwagon, but what I'm saying is, can we at least try to do the right thing? So yeah, man. Um, is that a Spike Lee movie? Do the right thing. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a whole. That man is a whole podcast on his own, bro. Like, maybe we'll maybe we'll do a video. Hey, Spike, if like you're that. watching, we'd love to have you on. <laughs> yeah, man. So, uh, yeah. So I had him going eleven and five. You say about ten and six, nine and seven. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm always pessimistic because I just don't think. I think Mike McCarthy's a good coach, but I think initially he's probably good enough to be ten and six. But you're probably right, closer to eleven and five. But yeah, we'll I'll see. Believe, we'll see what I'll happens. it when I see it. Yeah. All the right. One Joe. weird thing with the one last weird thing about this team, which kind of illustrates our the way we were talking about with um, how they underachieved and everything. They finished their division first in both points and points against by a decent margin, which means they were clearly the best team. They just decided to choke up a couple of games that really had no business choking on. So there's that uh, if you want to worry. But that's all. I mean, hopefully you can wash all that away by uh, firing everybody and getting rid of Garrett and all that. But my suspicion is is very little to do about the coach and maybe about the overall good old Jera and uh, how he runs his, his uh, ship. Yeah. So good old Jera Jones. But he'll be happy if they make the playoffs and go ten and six. He'll be he'll be doing a little dance and smoking his cigars and having post game conferences. Right. Like a owner. Very strange. Yep, yep. Well man, uh I think we, we pretty much we, we will get to more uh weird, uh disturbed owners as we go through this division. Yeah, yeah, true. Very, very disturbed. All right, y'all, so we are on to the NFC East now. This was our first video. Hope uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Cowboys fans, man, let us know what you think and, you know, how well y'all think y'all are going to do. Uh, we're probably morons, but be more articulate and tell us exactly why we're morons if you're, yeah. uh, if you're in that. <laughs> right, right. So I'm Leo Rays Rayon again. and I'm Josh Glaze Glazer. All right, that's the Rays and Glaze podcast. Like, sub, and share for some more stuff, man. Peace. All right, y'all take care.